Black or black, I know the plight that's going on in the inner cities, inside, the behind the scenes as a pastor for 22 years. There is nowhere else to go but to come back home. I'm talking to the black community, back home to the Republican Party because that's what has to happen. This may be news to some, but the Republican Party was actually partly founded by black people. After the emancipation, the first party that black people joined was not the Democratic Party. Because see, the Democratic Party was the party of the KKK. The Democratic Party was a party of the Confederacy. So black people, when they were enfranchised after emancipation, they joined the Republican Party. And so therefore the first representatives and the first senators that were black were Republicans. So this MAGA black pastor is telling the truth when he says black people come home to the Republican Party. Well, the Constitution was not written for uh, immoral, unjust people. The Constitution was written for moral, spiritual people who could discern the times and the seasons through the word of God. That is so true. Our Constitution was not written for uh, people that did not have a moral or spiritual foundation. Because you can't have a constitutional republic with a citizenry that does not have a moral or religious foundation. John Adams said that our constitution, our republic, the constitution itself was written for a moral and religious populace. See, when you don't have a moral or spiritual or religious populace, then anything goes in a democracy because all you need is mob rule for things to pass. That's why we are a constitutional republic. But until the constitutional republic, the people within it return to a moral and religious and especially a biblical worldview, you're gonna continue to see the debauchery, you're gonna continue to see the downfall and the destruction that's taking place in America. I know the plight that's going on in the inner cities, inside the behind the scenes as a pastor, for 22 years, there is nowhere else to go but to come back home. I'm talking to the black community, back home to the Republican Party because that's what has to happen. That Republican Party, if I can play, you know, the reporter pushing back, that Republican Party is different than the one that they left, right? That's why MAGA black, we're talking about the policies that make sense, the policies that brought us together. Uh, it just so happened it was under that branch. I have to add this caveat. Yes, the Republican Party of today is different than the Republican Party right after emancipation. It is different because most members of the Republican Party today are just like the Democrats. That's the Uniparty. But see, MAGA is different. MAGA is like the Democratic Party of yesteryear. They are because MAGA is for the working people. MAGA is for the populace. See, the Republican Party used to be when black people joined was for the people that had been downtrodden that were looking to keep America a Republic. But over the years, it evolved to a country club chamber of commerce party. So that party did turn its back on black people, but MAGA, like I said, is different. MAGA is like the democratic party of yesteryear because that's the one thing I always heard from my family members that the Democratic Party was for the people. Well, MAGA is for the people. So if you are a black person who yearns for the Democratic Party of yesteryear, MAGA is the group for you. Some guy named Trump, I, you know, heard of him. <laughs> but but it was really what worked. Where's a white shirt and a red tie, if I'm not mistaken? Oh my God, but it's what worked. Uh, cutting taxes, lowering uh, the unemployment, raising employment. These things actually worked peace through strength, everything that was done in our foreign trade, uh, building up our military, all of those things worked. That's the Republican Party I'm talking about, America first. That's what has to happen. I'm not talking about this rhino Republican Party. I'm talking about the Republican Party that freed the slaves, the party of Lincoln. We're, we're, we're talking about the party that when, when the slaves got out and they said, where we go? The first Republican Black Congress was initiated. That's the Republican Party I'm talking about, the party of Frederick Douglass. That's the party. Why then are so many of our modern 
black leaders, deceased and living, why were they more associated with the Democratic Party? I'm not talking about in the 60s. I'm not talking about in the 70s or the 80s. I'm talking about now. I'm talking about John Lewis. I'm talking about Andrew Young and Julian Bond. I'm talking about Don McEachin, who we just talked about. Maybe Adam Clayton Powell takes us a little farther back, but you look at Benjamin Hooks. You, you know all the people I'm talking about. Why are they so associated with the Democratic Party? Why do they not see that that's where the Democratic Party is? Why the Democratic, modern Democratic Party gave us first African-American president. We have the first African-American female vice president. Seems like that would be reason to celebrate. Well, I'll answer that question for you, brother, because these so-called leaders, and so funny, like Malcolm X said, these puppets that these puppet masters put in place to do the whims of the Democratic Party, of the Marxists and the Communists and the Socialists, that's why these so-called leaders are the ones that do what the party wants them to do. And so that's why they are siding with the Democratic Party, because you have to understand something. After the 1964 Civil Rights Act was passed, the black community by and large turned away from its trust in God and began to put its trust in the government. And who was the party that provided for this false sense of allyship? The Democratic Party. The Democratic Party through Lyndon Baines Johnson provided this false sense of that the Democratic Party was fighting for them, that the Democratic Party was the party of the people, that the Democratic Party was a party of black folks. When if you look at the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Bill, all the Republicans voted for it. A number of Democrats, the Dixiecrats, did not vote for it, but yet that truth was hidden from black people. And so Lyndon Baines Johnson said it himself. He said they'll have black people voting Democratic for over 200 years. He didn't say black people, he said something else. And therefore, the Democrats took advantage of black people. And so they convinced these so-called black leaders to align themselves with the Democratic Party because that has been pushed for decades in the black community. It goes back to family again. What was the family really all about? The family was about hard work, go to school, pay your bills, stay out of trouble, and the Democrat Party, if we really look real close, did the opposite. Massive incarceration, uh, totally indoctrinating our kids through things like CRT. Now, another thing too, today's Democratic Party is not the party of the past. It's not the party of JFK. This is a party of Marxist, socialist, communist. It is a radical left party that is seeking to remake America in a socialist, communist, Marxist image. It's not the same party as it was 60 years ago, even 40 years ago. Teachers in a couple of schools in a, in a country of over 300 million people, right? That's not a, 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 an epidemic. Yeah, well, what happened was when they started saying that white men are the problem and black people will always be oppressed, that's an issue in a country called the United States of America. Of course it's an issue, but it's not an issue because it's so isolated in little places where it's yeah. happened, just like if there's somebody teaching. Boy, these media people, I always wanna say it's isolated. It's isolated to a few places here and there, but the idea, see, that's what a CRT itself may not be in every place, but the tenants is in every place. The tenant is in every teacher that comes from these indoctrination factories, these colleges where they teach people the principles of CRT, critical theory. And so therefore they're teaching those principles to our children. They may not call it CRT, but the principle is being taught. A class that flies in the face of the Constitution says so the Constitution's a fake document. I'm not saying that exists, but if one person's doing it in the middle of Iowa, that's not a problem in America. Well, what happened was that the division anywhere can become division everywhere so uh as a pastor it's a little leaven leavens a whole lump so it's the little things that we ignore that keep a mountain and surmounting itself now it becomes an obstruction it becomes an obstacle and we allow these things these little things to continue now we're dealing with a goliath so now we have to take down the giants the giants of technology the, the, the giants of what we call the uniparty. And so here we are. Now we have to really mean it that if we're going to uh, be uh, solid and form solidarities, now has to happen. So that that's what MAGA is really all about now. But do you see MAGA as uniting? I mean, certainly it unites people behind it and its idea and this candidate. A lot of people say it's a cult. It's a cult of personality, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that before, but always. I have people here, Pastor, 
who are saying to me that they would take a bullet for Donald Trump. He's not the president. He's not, you know, that, that's, that's unusual. You don't hear that a lot. This is what has happened. All of the atrocities, the calamity. See, that's how the media likes to spin it. They like to spin that people that are voting for Donald Trump, people that support Donald Trump are in a cult because they can't understand. They can't understand why this man who's been indicted so many times, while this man who's done this and done that, why are evangelicals, why are these so-called Christians voting for him and supporting him? Well, you have to understand, Christians are voting for the platform and the policies and not the person real Christians. They're not caught up and swept up in the cult and the personality of Donald Trump. What they see is a threat to religious freedom, a threat to life, a threat to the black community. And as far as a president is concerned, a presidential candidate, Trump is the only one that will bring about policies that will help to alleviate some of the stresses that the black community is facing. The, the, the whole debacle at the, at the border, everything now is causing people to awaken to what America is really all about. So this awakening now is taking on personal interests. So every community now is saying, I got something to lose in this if we don't stand together. And so that's what we're seeing. When, when a person says that, that's a personal interest. He's saying, yeah, and you know, everybody's not willing to die for anybody. But there are some who will say, it's, it's that cause right now. That's what Patrick Henry said. Give me liberty or give me death. And now that we- And David said it too. Is there not a cause before he went and fought Goliath? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause right now as an American citizen to stand up and speak out and stand for truth. There is a cause, especially men, black men. Is there not a cause? Don't you see the destruction? Don't you see the debauchery? Don't you see the disintegration that's taking place in our families and our communities? Is there not a cause for you to stand up and not be afraid to voice your opinion and stand in the gap for our communities, especially Christian men? Stop being timid. You've been taught how to be timid. Stop being timid. Be bold. The righteous are bold as a lion. We're hearing it again. It sounds to some foreign, but this is in the roots of this country. This is what America's all about. These these men came from farmers and, and business people, and most of them were just, just wanted things to be better who fought for this nation back in 1776. You're talking about awakening. Part of awakening is woke, right? People talking about woke. What does that mean to you? What does the word woke mean? Well, woke, woke is a, a false idea of awakening. It, it does everything opposite of awakening, which is a revival, which comes from a spiritual stirring of one's consciousness. And so if you have a lot of dirt, you know, in your mind, a lot of diluted or polluted things, what a revival does is shake the trees again so that now you can begin to see clearly. But what woke does, woke gives a, a, a false assimilation of action. Okay, I'm woke. Well, and it, it, it doesn't give action. Define it. What, what is woke? It, it, it tells you what cannot work, what will not work in a people. Of I'll define it for you, sir. Woke is an anti-God, anti-biblical, anti-American, anti-human, anti-Christian ideology that looks to supplant God and replace it with man. It's anything that's looking to intentionally divide people based upon race, gender, sexual orientation. It's humanism on steroids. It's Marxism and communism that's looking to infiltrate and has infiltrated every single institution in this land to pervert men to be women and women to be men. If you need more, call me up. So when a person says that illegal immigration is cool, that's woke. Why is that woke? It's woke because we know a nation cannot survive off of bringing Lottie Dottie, I'm being crazy now, but Lottie Dottie and everybody into the country, a nation cannot remain sovereign if it keeps its borders open. And why do we expect America to do it when all these other nations, other places, close and shut their borders? Isn't feeding your tired, your poor, your hungry, isn't that both a part of someone yeah. of the cloth as well as part of the, the Statue of Liberty? Yeah, but it's in the context of righteousness. Um, a, a nation that is not lifted up, if, 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 if it is exalted, it says righteousness exalts a nation. What does that mean? It means doing things right, 
or the right way or God's way of doing things. But sin is a reproach to any people. So if I say, give me your poor, give me your foreign, you know, it was under the understanding of when you come in, you have to become us. Okay, but who defines sin, right? I mean, some people, for some people, it's a sin to say, to build a wall and say you can't come over. To That's some people, it's a sin to let that person in without checking their papers and giving them due process. I mean, who's to define? Well, I went to that class. Um, God defines what sin is. And, and so as a Christian nation, a Christian Judeo nation, we cannot lose our roots in that in understanding that the word of God is the infallible word of doctrine and truth. But what if you're a Muslim in this country? What if you're an atheist? What if you're a Jew? What if you are Sikh or Hindu? You know, one's precepts of religion are different than yours, different than mine, different than hers. Well, this is what I love about this nation. Our founding fathers put together what is called the U.S. Constitution, the First Amendment, uh, the, the freedom of what? Religion. Uh, it, it did that without what? Wanting people to assimilate into a religion that controlled the people. And this nation was always designed to evangelize, even those that don't agree with us. And, and so disagreement does not mean disunity. It just means an opportunity for us to come together. That's why it's called a more perfect union. Our founding fathers knew, like Benjamin Franklin came out of the halls of, uh, of Philly, Constitutional Hall, and the, the young lady asked him, what, what do we got here? He says, daughter, a republic, if we can keep it. It's good to see a black pastor speaking out when it comes to truth, when it comes to standing up for righteousness in this land. It's good to see that. I wish I would see more and more black pastors standing up for the word of God. Because at the end of the day, it's not a Republican thing. It's not a Democratic thing. The only party that we're concerned about is the party of Jesus Christ. And in terms of the candidates and the party that closely reflects biblical values, there's only one candidate for the presidency. And there's only one party that comes close to representing true biblical values, not this progressive stuff that these progressive folks want to push. And that party is a Republican party. And in particular, it's MAGA and specifically Donald Trump.